I want to begin today with talking about what is indeed a kind of change and movement with American food. And it's sometimes called the snout to tail movement. Meaning that if you slaughter a pig, vegetarians plug your ears for a minute. If you slaughter a pig, then the chef will try to use every part of the pig in some kind of culinary way. Nothing is wasted, nothing is thrown away. Every part of the pig in the hands of the right chef can become a delicious meal. All over the country, gastro pubs are popping up. And these restaurants are trying to honor this simple idea that every part of the animal can be used and should be used for food. Now, when I was a little boy, I remember seeing my grandfather work as a butcher in the back of his little grocery store. Every morning, he would carefully grind beef so that people could buy their fresh hamburger that day. I learned early on that hamburger is more or less leftover scraps. Scraps of meat, scraps of fat, but when it is ground in the right proportion and the butcher knows what he or she is doing, it is absolutely delicious. To this day, I can still remember what those hamburgers tasted like when I was a kid. Again, it's this idea that nothing is wasted and everything counts. My grandmother Agnes, who worked at the front of the store, she had her own version of this because when she wasn't working at the store, she was at home making quilts. She loved to make quilts, and I still have two of them. And while I'm sure that she would sometimes go to the store and buy some materials, most of the time, her quilts were made of scraps of cloth. One leftover piece of fabric was used, and then another, and then another, and then another, and she knew how to use these scraps of cloth, turning them into medallions or stars or circles on top of a quilt. Nothing was wasted. Everything counted. Now, what I'm more and more aware of is that all of our lives are made up of scraps and rags and leftovers. What do I mean? I simply mean that very few of us here today are so together that we are the complete human package. We have strengths and we have weaknesses. We see and we don't see. We understand some things in life and other things we do not understand. We do great things and we can also do some really awful things. We can say kind words and harsh words, sometimes in the very same conversation. In other words, we are scraps and rags and leftovers. And yet part of the faith experience is the belief that God can take these scraps and rags and leftovers that of who we are and who we are not, and somehow turn it into something beautiful. Now, I know that the Bible puts a great deal of emphasis on the sin of pride, the idea that we think too highly of ourselves, and that's a problem. I understand that. But I have to be honest with you and say that my experience tells me that most people don't think too highly of themselves. Most of us think too little of ourselves. I see moms and dads, and they beat themselves up over and over again for not being able to spend enough quality time with their kids. I see people feeling as if they should be more successful than what they are at this point in their life, that they should be making more money, they should have a better job, they should have accomplished more. And generally, they feel as if that somehow they should be more together than what they really are. And so every day, people live with this low-grade fever of disappointment in themselves. And sometimes they take it out on themselves, and sometimes they even lash out at others. Either way, it is not good. Inside most of us, myself included, there lives a harsh, ravenous critic and it is wild and insatiable and always hungry. And it feeds on this vulnerability that we are not enough. That we're not good enough or smart enough. That we're not 
pretty enough or famous enough or rich enough. And so it is very, very oppressive. And yet what I want to say this morning is that just because we cannot be everything, that doesn't mean we are nothing. We bring the scraps and the pieces and the leftovers of our lives to others. It's not perfect. It's not everything. But it doesn't have to be perfect in order for it to be good. That's really what I see in this story with Jesus in the feeding of the multitudes. Now, you can look at this story in a couple of different ways. One way is to see it as a supernatural miracle that Jesus took a few loaves and fish, that he magically multiplied them, and he fed 5,000 people. And if that's what literally happened, then surely that is a miracle. But I think there's another way of thinking about the story. Keep in mind that the theologian Paul Tillich wants to find a miracle in this way. He said, anything that points you to God is a miracle. And so the disciples, realizing that they needed to feed people, realizing that it was time for compassion and love and help, they began to shift their consciousness. Just that awareness of the other is a kind of miracle. And by the way, I happen to think that the United States of America receiving Syrian refugees should be a kind of miracle of compassion this year for our country. It's not just a good thing. It is a God thing because the multitudes are hungry and they are homeless. And then what you see in this story is that people began to donate what they had, and they created a beginning place for this evening meal. Isn't that a miracle? Sharing, gathering, pitching in what we have, doing what we can do. And then people began to share their bread and their fish, and then they started to realize that they had much more than what they could ever imagine. And they began to understand that sharing the food was more important than eating the food. It's always a miracle when the scraps, the leftovers of who we are, are given to others and they become more than what we could ever imagine. And not only is that true of us, I think it's also true of churches. In fact, I'm thinking of our own church today. There is so much we want to do as a church. There is so much we can do. There is so much we should do as a church. But our church cannot do everything. I know you come into this beautiful building on a Sunday morning, and it's stunning and it's lovely. And the music is inspiring and wonderful. And the art and architecture is amazing. And we have this program or that event. And it is done so well, it looks like we can do anything at our church. But the truth is, we need everyone's help. We need your scraps, your leftovers, your remnant pieces of everyone in the congregation, and we stitch them together over and over again. That's what makes a church. That's how a church thrives. Every loaf, every fish, every crumb counts. I guess I'm thinking about this because next year, in 2017, our church will celebrate its 150th anniversary. You should really applaud that, you know? We are the oldest Protestant church in the city of Los Angeles. But just as important, we have become probably the most open, inclusive, progressive, exciting, dynamic Protestant church in the city of Los Angeles. I mean, really, all you have to look is see what we just did today. 
We have become a place where so many different configurations of families are celebrated here, not once in a while, but every single week. Our church has become this quilt of diversity and love and inclusivity, and it bears witness to the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And yes, our church has come back to life. God has brought us back to life. Our church is vital and strong and loving again. But I am looking for miracles in our 150th year. And we're going to find them. And we are going to find them. Not by focusing on what we cannot do. And we're not going to focus on what we used to do. No, that's not it we're going to find the same kind of miracles that Jesus experienced that day feeding the multitudes. We're going to bring the imperfect scraps of our time, our talent, our treasure, and we're going to move into this 150th year with the highest of aspirations. I believe it is possible. I know it is possible. And so this morning I'm asking something of you. I want it for your personal life. I want it for your family. And I want it for our congregation too. This fall, let's quit focusing on what we are not. Let's quit focusing on what we don't have. Let's quit focusing on what we used to have. Let's quit focusing on our past mistakes. And instead, let's bring the crumbs of our life to God. All the scraps, all the imperfections, all the leftovers of our lives. And let's give them to God. And then let's give them to the people that we love. And let's give them to the church that we love. And then let's stand back and see what happens. Let's see if God could actually multiply everything that we are and everything that we want to be into something truly great for this world. Now, I know that some of us can bring big things to the world. Some of you can write big checks. Some of us can give big amounts of time to the church. Some of us can make a big difference in this world. I know that. And some of us can only bring small things to the world. But bringing the small things of your life does not make you a small person. Every single crumb counts. And that's what I see in this story with Jesus and the hungry multitudes. Every crumb counts. And so I want us to become a loaves and fishes church. And if you don't like loaves and fishes, then think lox and bagels, okay? You bring what you can bring. You do what you can do. And let's keep building this community of faith. I want us to be a snout to tail church. I'm not going to say who's the snout and who's the tail is, but what I know is that everything and everyone is important to our community of faith. If we could move into the 150th year of our church's history with that mentality, I know, I don't just believe, I know that we will see miracles. And so, friends, like it is every Sunday, it is so good to see you today. I love you all. Let's love one another. And let's move into this fall season with fewer apologies, less guilt, diminished negativity, believing, really believing, that God can take our scraps and leftovers and crumbs to create something beautiful for this world. Amen.